Good afternoon, my name is Joe Cashwell with Rotocraft RC, doing another video about our XL Pro Case. This is the Pro Case that we're doing for Copter Kids. So in the XL Pro Case, we have the heavy duty deck material on the bottom and the upper. We put storage into it. We blacked out the 406 Duo chargers. We've got the HD fans in it. We incorporated their logo into the upper deck with two chargers. And as you can see in the double XL case, there's four chargers in the upper deck as compared to two, and four chargers in the bottom deck as compared to two. Both of these incorporate three Meanwell power supplies a piece. So as we're doing the design work with the customer, we get their EPS file. We incorporated an inverted V groove cut into the storage door. So it says Copter Kids with their logo. And once Chris has this design done, then we go ahead and send it to the customer. We got approval and we're ready to start cutting. Now we were in a little bit of a hurry to get the last of the parts cut. We had Hurricane Matthew bearing down on us. So not only were we trying to get parts cut, we were trying to get all our stuff together for the hurricane to get here and everything serviced and ready to go. So one of the items that we've been doing on our pro decks for the last couple months is we've been doing a mortise and tenon. This is actual tenon. This is a piece of the material that projects out and this would be a mortise. What happens is the tenon drops in there and locks in. Uh, we're doing this for a couple reasons. One is definitely for more strength. By the time you add all of this, you're getting three times the amount of chemical well by the time you come up with the sides and everything. The other thing is for alignment. We've been getting busier and busier, and you all know before it's over with, we're gonna have to bring somebody in to help us prep the decks. I've talked to several people and interviewed some people about coming in and, and helping us out. What we're trying to do is just take the guesswork out for somebody that's not a craftsman. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the, the chemical weld on here and this actually starts to change the softness of the material. And as you can see with this mortise and tenon, we have a lot more glue surface that we can deal with. The other thing is the way we step those out, it gives a place for the product to go. And if you see it, it squeezes right out. Now, somebody that is not a skilled person, not saying that the person that comes to work for us is not gonna be skilled. Of course, this one's gonna come back to bite me, I'd imagine. Um, this is gonna be something that I can have my 10-year-old do and, and I can show it to him. He could repeatedly do it over and over and over again. I just did four of these the way we used to do it before. I'd just be now getting to my second one.
One of the new tools I've made is I've taken a broken Scorpion 1.5 millimeter and I ground it down for removing my pins. That way I can rewire the balance leads to match the balance board and the eye charger that we're using in the upper deck. And then this is us spraying on the plastic die. It does come in a spray can as well as quartz, but we use the spray can so we have zero cleanup. And these just happen to be a couple of chargers that we're doing for the projects we're on now. And as you can see, when Chris peels off the mask, just everything is beautiful. It really looks good with the eye charger carbon that's down on the bottom with the flat black that we're putting on the chargers. It really stands out. And then once Chris puts them all back together, he goes ahead and does a quick test on his bench. And then once I get them, I go ahead and do a test charge and test discharge before we install them in the case. And now we're gonna go ahead and make some of our connections. These are all custom. And on our cases, we also red Loctite, anything that does not have a lock nut on it. Yes, it's a little bit of pain in the butt for the customer if they ever have to remove it, but we do not want it coming apart in shipping or when it's traveling around the world. So inside of this case, as well as the other pro cases, we have a mounting system for holding the power supplies. We changed this one up a little bit. Chris came up with a new uh, mounting plate that goes inside the case. And then our power supplies mount to that. That way the customer, if they ever have an issue out in the field, they can always pull the power supply out and put another one in with really quick access and turnaround time. We want to keep these guys up in the air. That's how they make their living. Now with all of our pro cases, we always use the Meanwell RSP lines. These are voltage sensing. If you travel around the world, you do not have to open up your case and flick any switches. When you plug the IEC in with 230, this switches to 230. If you're here in the States and you plug it into 120, it switches to 120. You don't have to worry about frequency or voltage changes. Now this is the plate that mounts to the bottom of the power supply. This is a little bit different than what you saw in the big ether case that we did. The thing that is different is we no longer double side tape these to this. Now we are using a 30 pound double side 3M tape with a primer. It's never coming off. But the customer basically has to send us this back with the mounting plate on it. We take this off, we send it back to Meanwell for the warranty issue. Now, all they have to do is unbolt this from the bottom of the power supply and they're good to go. We use a red lock tight to put the bolts in there, um, but it's only a four millimeter bolt, so it's not like it's gonna kill you to get it out. If you have to, you have any issues, just put a soldering iron on there for about five seconds and it'll heat up that red lock tight and zip it off. So we're gonna show you how these lock together inside the case. Now, once again, we already showed you the Meanwell 2000. That will bolt to the plate that's in the bottom of the case. The RSP320 will bolt to this plate and it parks right beside that one. And the second RSP320 parks right there. Now these are run the two chargers in the upper deck and this runs the two chargers in the bottom. We did amp calculations with the customer to find out how many amps they're gonna to need to charge with. And this customer is very, very happy with a Meanwell 2000. Matter of fact, the case that he has now, he's only running 1500 watts. So we're gonna have 500 more watts than what he's using now. Then this is what it looks like when everything's locked down inside. Now all we have to do is make all our final connections, do a little bit of testing, and this baby's ready to ship.
You helping him build cases? No? What are you doing? Playing a game. Playing a game? What's your name? Jacob. Jacob. Oh. I never get to play with the machine. This is what happens when you leave the machine unattended.